All right, welcome back to another video by the Canadian Home Painter. Uh, in today's video, I just wanted to make a, a short video showing some of the essential painting tools uh, that I use and that I think are very helpful for anyone starting out with painting. So um, first, this is a foldable table that um, I purchased a while ago. Um, it's great to have on the job site. So this is for obviously residential painting. That's what I do. And um, this table works great for just setting up and keeping your things off the floor and more or organized. So first on the list, I would say is uh, this handy tool. So this is uh, just a sanding block that I use for sanding, as you have seen in other videos if you've watched them, uh, just for sanding the, the drywall before painting. So this just uh, clamps onto the block. So it holds it on there nice and tight, and then you can use any painting pole to attach. So that would be essential item number two is a painting pole. So I have a number of painting poles. So uh, these are all my painting poles that I've collected over the years. So they, they range in sizes. Um, it's always good to have a variety of painting poles. You wouldn't have to have all these right away. But over time, you'll find that um, some of the smaller ones are just good in smaller areas like closets. And then obviously some of your larger painting poles that this one really stretches out. It is about seven feet long, I believe. Uh, let's see here, maybe six feet. Um, but it'll extend to like 12 feet. Then obviously you have your four footer that extends. Um, so these are all different varieties and kinds, um, but that would be an essential is to pick yourself up uh, a couple different sizes of painting poles. Okay, next on my list would be the brushes. So uh, for these, um, I, I really like now these are kind of these are getting kind of ratty these brushes they won't be around for too much longer um, but these are good brushes they last for a number of uses these are just the inch and a half um, but when they get washed out they do ex expand a bit so um, probably get closer to two inch um, then there's there's a few different sizes that I would have mostly the inch and a half um, another thing well then there's these types of brushes as well, just for smaller spots. And I always have um, smaller ones just to get into really tight areas. Um, now, another essential would be these little four inch roller sleeves and uh, a pole. So this is quite a long one. I have different sizes, but you definitely want to uh, get these these are great for in behind toilets or even rolling on doors or just other uh, smaller areas that you need to get into um, so dry decks this would be a good thing to always have uh, this is for filling uh, nail holes so before you paint um, goes on pink and it dries white so that is something that I always make sure I have Sanding block, good for sanding out repairs. This is just a little drywall knife, great for little repairs, uh, putting on some compound on your walls or ceiling. Uh, caulking gun, uh, this would be an essential tool for any painter. You're always going to be doing caulking, uh, so you wanna make sure that you get a good one. They only Costs about $20 for a decent one. A pair of rubber gloves. So these are great for working with 
uh, different paints, stains. Uh, you don't want to get this stuff on your skin and have it uh, absorbed through your pores. So a pair of rubber gloves for working, always a good idea. Before I forget too, you want to make sure that you have a good quality utility knife. So a utility knife is something that you'll always just use. Uh, there's so many different applications that you'll need it for. This one comes with this little metal end on it. This is great for taking screws off, flathead screws, or opening cans of paint, or I even used it to uh, open up that putty. Another thing you'll want is a dust mask. Um, you're going to be doing sanding and you don't want to breathe that in, so always make sure you have a decent dust mask. Uh, this tool has been something I have used quite a bit. Um, it's great for uh, trying to reach those hard to reach spots uh, with your paintbrush. So this can be uh, attached to a painting pole. Uh, great for doing ceilings, I find. So uh, that was only about $15 and it's lasted quite a long time. Uh, okay, roller cages. So I have a few here. Um, this one is one that I would suggest buying. It, it does work very well. Um, so it'll get you a little bit longer reach. And uh, roller sleeves. I like to use the 10 mil, 10 millimeter thickness ones. Uh, they can be washed. This one's been used a number of times. Make sure you get a good quality uh, roller sleeve because that will affect the finished um, job, the quality of your paint job. These are, oh, that's another, another little brush. Um, so these are a couple other smaller poles. These can are painting um, handles. So these can be uh, attached to a, a pole as well. Um, but just it's always good to have a variety of sizes for these, um, just to get into different areas. Uh, obviously, I use these smaller paint trays for the four-inch roller sleeves. Now this is something that I really like as well, is these paint tray liners. So uh, I buy these by the hundreds and uh, they just rest in there. You can use them a number of times and then also they're, they can be recycled. So that's environmentally friendly as well. And here is your paint tray. So you just pop the liner in there and uh, these you'll use for decades. These rarely never ever have to be replaced. So these are great to uh, have a, a few of these on hand. And uh, rags. So this is just one rag, but uh, make sure you have rags. You're always gonna be wiping things, surfaces clean, uh, getting dust off or cleaning contaminants off of the surfaces before you paint. Really important to have rags. Okay, next on the list would be fans. Fans always help uh, dry paint a bit better. This is a window fan. So um, this will work great for taking some of the fumes and the air out of the room. This um, is just a cheap fan. I, I bought at a thrift shop actually for $5. And this more or less, I just want to circulate air in the room, helping things to dry. Um, one thing that I always like to have, now belt sanders are handy, but I find orbital sanders um, very, very useful and handy for around outside exterior uses. Um, make sure you get some good um, orbital sanding discs. Obviously, a extension cord is high up on the essentials uh, for your orbital, your fans, etc. Um, now, another useful thing would be drywall knives. I have a couple here, and this one's for inside corners. Also, some wider ones. So I have a variety of drywall tools because I do a lot of repairs, and any painter is also going to have to be handy at fixing up the wall surfaces, ceilings, etc. So you wanna make sure you have some good drywall knives. 
this here, a drywall hawk. This is what you put your drywall compound on. Um, so these are not very expensive, maybe about $20. Um, these drywall knives, they range from anywhere between $15 and $30. Um, I believe this, uh, this big one is about $30. But the drywall knives are about, the six inch knives are about $15. So you want yourself a, a drywall hawk. So another thing that's good to have is a light. So this is just an LED. It doesn't get hot, which is nice. Um, and this really brightens up a room. I know it's quite tiny, but it uh, it really does the trick. It, you can move it around different angles and it works great. Um, another thing that I really need to have is a pair of saw horses. So these ones are foldable. So that's great for, for myself because uh, I load those up in my vehicle. Um, and let's say I'm painting some baseboard or casing before it's installed, you're gonna definitely want yourself some sawhorses. Now I do prefer having the uh, foldable ones just because they're easy for transportation. Pair of safety glasses. Um, so you always want to be safe and uh, if you're working you know above you you don't want paint to get in your eyes so uh, obviously a pair of safety glasses is key in protecting your eyes um, let's say you're doing some drywall sanding uh, a pair of ski goggles actually works really good for keeping it out of your eyes okay um, paint scrapers obviously for exterior um, you're going to be fixing up some wood siding or some trim around windows or different projects and you need to get that old paint off so paint scrapers these are really good to have make sure they're nice and sharp um, make the job a lot easier now this uh, tool I've demonstrated before this is for cleaning your brushes and your rollers so when you're cleaning them out you're just gonna put that through the bristles while you're running some warm water over it. And that is going to help open up the bristles and get them clean. While you're run running the water over your roller sleeve, this is going to help just get that paint off a little bit quicker. Um, a hammer. So this is a hammer actually I inherited from my grandfather. Um, he used it for most of his life as well. Um, I like it because it's great. It has this rounded end, great for tapping in uh, any imperfections that are uh, away from the wall, dings or different things, just tapping it in or around a screw, for example, once you get it away, you just want that surface to be concave and it, it works great for that. So a hammer always comes in very useful. Um, always good to have some wood filler on hand. So this wood filler, if it's sealed up, it'll it'll keep for quite a long time. And you know, there's always damage to trim. I just used this last, or a few weeks ago actually, on a job where um, there was a corner of dry, or a window sill that needed to be fixed up. Wood filler always does the trick and works great for that. So a couple other things, uh, a, br a broom is always something good to have on hand. You're always going to be needing to sweep things up in your customer's house. And uh, so a broom with a dustpan, always good to have. Uh, a step ladder. So this step ladder is very lightweight and uh, it's just a, a two step. Um, and this uh, this comes in very handy uh, with a ladder a step ladder like this you can reach um, pretty much any uh, place in your average house because um, you know most wall heights are eight feet so with this um, if you're you know anywhere between five and six feet tall you should have no problem reaching to the top of an eight foot wall with a, a handy little step ladder like this folds up so you can uh, store it nice and easy now the next thing would be a little bit bigger step ladder now this is a four footer and I uh, I use this all the time um, a little bit more sturdy durable for reaching uh, any heights in in your uh, typical house 
in North America or Europe. Um, so yeah, this works excellent. This is a four footer feather light uh, step ladder. So not very heavy at all as well and uh, works works great. Uh, another thing would be a drill. So um, I like these high impact drills, uh, the, the 20 volt max lithium battery. Um, so they work really great. Um, have a number of um, drill bits. You want to uh, make sure you have your Robertson, uh, your, your flathead, um, your Phillips, uh, those are your top three. Um, you will need to be drilling, so uh, make sure you have yourself a good drill. So another thing I would suggest um, is a tool bag or um, just a carrying toolbox thing. Uh, this would fit a lot of your stuff in. Right now it's kind of uh, messy, but um, yeah, it's got a nice handle to hold and a strap to put over your shoulder. I also have I also have this one. It's quite full and um, it's also just kind of disorganized, but um, I keep a lot of stuff in, in here as well. So this would be a good investment to uh, invest in a couple toolboxes for carrying stuff. Another thing that you'll want to uh, consider is a drill. Um, now this was not a very expensive drill, but it's a hammer drill. Uh, I don't really use it for the hammer drill application, but this is great for plugging in and stirring up drywall compound. So uh, a drywall mixer um, for mixing up drywall compound uh, and a good heavy duty plug-in drill. This gives you a lot more power to get through that um, compound. So definitely something to uh, invest in would be one of these plug-in drills. Painting pail. These are super handy for um, for putting paint in and um, using for your brushwork. So these you buy the paint liner separate. I don't have any on me but uh, you buy them by the packs of six and they can be recycled as well but nice for a cleanup. So you just pop those in there um, fill that up with a bit of paint. It has a nice handle for your hand you know, for if you're up on the step ladder or whatever, and it has a magnet for your brush to attach to. Um, so these paint pails, these are really valuable to have. Um, I'd, I'd say that's an essential thing to have for every painter. Um, these are going to run you only about 10 bucks. And then the paint liners, um, they're about $7 for six. So just over a dollar each, but uh, really in a uh, really valuable thing to have for every painter. Um, so yeah, painting pail. So, uh, last but not least, uh, drop cloths. So these ones are freshly washed. I, I wash them just uh, in my washer at home, just a couple at a time. Um, so these are nice and clean, ready for the next job. Um, these are f uh, four by eight. So four feet wide by eight. Uh, this one is four by 10. And this one's a quite a big one. This one is an eight by 12. So, um, you know, they range in prices. Um, your four by eight, you know, heavy duty drop cloth, it's gonna run you about 15 to $20. Four by 10 might be about $25. Uh, your eight by 12 could run you about 30. Now, um, or 35. I forget what I paid actually, but um, you're going to want to have a number of, of these, especially if you're doing a number of rooms in a house. So um, I have probably 20 drop cloths. Um, that way, if I'm doing a number of rooms in a house, I can cover up all the floors. Uh, these good, these 8x12s work great for covering like sofas or beds. Um, so yeah, they, uh, they're definitely an essential for painting and uh, yeah and as far as your ladders and step ladders go um, obviously these are just two of the, the ladders I have I have a six footer an eight footer a ten footer um, an adjustable one for stairs but to get started um, you know you'll be able to do a lot with just the step ladder and the four the two foot and the four foot step ladder um, so I hope you found this interesting and helpful if you are thinking of starting your own painting business. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Now, I may have missed some things. I, 
I have most of my tools inside the house at the moment, but obviously there's not everything. And this is what I would say are the basics, the essentials. Um, I have a lot more things. Wouldn't consider them the essentials. They're just things I've picked up over the years, not things that you need uh, to get started, obviously, if you're just beginner painter. Um, but the things that I've talked about and shown you, these are the things that I would say every painter needs to have. Um, so yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and uh, be sure to look for more videos in the future. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, then uh, do hit that subscribe button now and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for watching.